path, everybody. We're continuing on page 200, where we left off of the Tamid Shal Shachem Mechapel Alavedes Alaylo, the Tamid Shal Ben Abayim Mashal Yayim, Asher Ema Kippurim Mechapel Alavedes Chamuriz, the Tamid Shal Kabbenel Mechapel Mitzasasei Bilvad, which is pretty much in the center of the page. Um, we left off actually what one line under that. The Einza Echta Va'ashuv which the line begins, Hatfila, this is in the original text, you can see it in the corresponding English text, or wherever you have the uh, ability to follow these classes, whatever text you're using to follow with these classes, and if you're watching it online, and wherever you're watching it, on the original website, there's a separate scroll bar, as we mentioned time and again, of course, for the newcomers, for newcomers, the, 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 uh, it's set up in a way that the text on the original site, it, it has its own scroll bar, which it's easy to follow as such. So uh, the original site would be tanyaonline.com. And the advantage, as we mentioned, as we mentioned, has that it has all the previous classes. As an example, we're learning, I believe this is the fifth class on this 11th chapter in Geras Atshuva, which is the segment that we're presently learning, the third segment of Sefer Tanya. So all the previous classes from the very beginning of the Tanya, first and second, we merited to conclude the first and second, and towards the end of the third segment, uh, and all the classes are lined up on the left side, and they appear in the same fashion. Hmm. And in this case, to understand everything that Alter Rebbe said till now, in the previous classes on the chapter, 11th chapter, tr- truly a click away, and, um, of course, to understand today's message, one would have to understand and appreciate everything the Alter Rebbe said in this chapter. And more so, of course, this chapter, Yid Aleph, comes as a culminating chapter, or an important chapter which culminates the whole presentation of the Alter Rebbe. An important, as we mentioned, a very comforting chapter. Kind of, without Yid Aleph, Yid Aleph, we wouldn't really have the ability to you know, we would understand the intensity of the the, the, the subject of tshuva, particularly as the, the based on the Al Trebis presentation over here, like no other, like no other, like no other presentation bechlal in Avedus Hashem, like the Al Trebis. We mentioned it time and again, the perfect manual to Avedus Hashem, the perfect manual to Avedus Hatshuva, mm, but it it's so intense based on the information which the Altarebbe presents to us, kind of, the Altarebbe felt, of course he felt, because, how do I know he felt so? Because he wrote the Pei Gidalev. He felt that I need to make it practical for every human being to know uh, that this is all pertinent to him or her, literally, and without any doubt, when they will hop on that Shuva bandwagon, if you will, it will work for them 100%. And as the Altarebbe brings home this message, the fact with the, uh, again, you can see the previous chapters, but just a tidbit, we're still right, we're still uh, not there yet to start today's class with today's information, but a little tidbit over here of the Alter Rebbe's previous, uh, the spirit of this message, that it's with absolute certainty that Hashem will forgive once a Yid does tshuva, the, justified, the, the, the justifiability of saying that Baruch HaTah Hashem Gali, so mention Chanun uh, HaMar Belislech, that is, that as, as we say in the Shemayin Esra, the Amida, that Hashem is a Chanun Hamar Belisleach, and if there was a, any doubt that Hashem is atoning presently for the Yid who's standing and asking, Slach lo nami nikachotonu, mechel lo maki nikifashonu, and so on, that Hashem is forgiving him, we would never be able to say Hashem's name, because Sofik Baruch Hashem, there's a doubt, if you make a, made a, meant to make a bracha, we always lean towards the side of leniency not to make the bracha. This is a rule in all brachas. And if there was any doubt, we would not halachically be allowed to say Baruch HaTah Hashem, Shana Mar The fact that we do, that establishes 100% Hashem is atoning for us. 100%. This is a halachic idea. And then al Rebbe accentuates on this Conclusion of the bracha Hamar Belislech. Not only Hashem is a Melech Mechel Vesaleach that He's a King which atones, which is for that matter as we mentioned 
This is the conclusion of the Brachas on Yom Kippur as an example, but here we add much more to that. Not only he's a king which atones, but he's a Chanun Hamar Belistach. He increases in atoning based on the verse in Ezra, Verav Lisloyach. And this, and the, 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 the message here, again, you can see in the last few classes, that I sh- you know, here the Alt Rebbe introduces the Mida of Mechilo being part of Hashem's Ein Sof, the backdrop of Hashem being an infinite God, and therefore Hashem's Mida is, in this case, the Mida of Mechilo, the Slicha Kapara, is Ein Sof, it's infinite. And as such, if it's infinite, by all definitions, we did say that we don't take advantage of this, Chas V'Shalom, a Yid is prudent enough to understand if the Eivishter establishes an Ein Sof in his Mechilo, in his slicho, but the same token we're dealing with a melech malche am lachem hakadosh baruch hu. We mentioned Yerushalmi. We have to be very careful not to abuse it, understandably so. But in the same token, from Hashem's perspective, there is no difference between one and a thousand and ten thousand times the person violated and comes to hakadosh baruch hu and asks forgiveness. By the definition, the mere definition of Hashem being in sub, thus his midas being as well in Sof infinite, in this case the Mida of Slicho Mechila Bekapora, atonement, forgiving, erasing a sin. And by contrast, the way it works by the human beings, by one human being to another. First time, second time, third time, Revi, as we quoted the Medrash, but may should have been why by Ipil of the simple reason is because it was the fourth time. He didn't believe that some atonement is, is going to ever happen. Of course, Moshe Rabbeinu appreciated, knew the Eivishter is Hashem's Mechil of Ein Sof, but on the surface, kind of getting the message over to Am Yisrael, you have to at least deal with HaKadosh Baruch Hu the way you deal with another party. A fourth time, and then we can all appreciate, you need not to elaborate. One hurts a person, asks Mechila, okay, I'm going to be Mechil you, you're sincere, and so on, and then you do it again, how sincere were you? But I'll atone for you again the third time, fourth time, not so easy. Of course not. When it comes to Kodesh Baruch Hu, the fact that it's Ein Sof, there's no difference the first and the thousandth time. Again, as we elaborated in the previous classes, it's, it's, it's the exact same by all definitions of what the Midah of Kodesh Baruch Hu, who is Ein Sof, that character, that attribute of atoning, is, has that same spirit and, and, and energy of Ein Sof, infinite. And if you're talking about infinity, one in a thousand is exactly the same. Again, I invite you to see the previous classes. It's The message is, is extraordinary. It's life-saving. It's a life-changing message. Did I ever put it all out there for us? This That's what we, we mentioned at the very beginning. Peri Gidalov is the most comforting chapter in, in the Geras HaTshuva. I mean, after the Altadeva's presentation, of course, but a culminating, comforting chapter by all, by all means. So the Alter Rebbe says, be, so the Alter Rebbe continues here, and he says that Hashem, he, 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 in, the, in the very end, in the end of last week's class, Hashem takes away our sin every single year, even we confess that the year before, on Yom Kippur, we repeat Rahman al not that it has to be so, but it's possible that we repeat the same sin, and we ask Hashem to forgive us, and atone for us, and we confess the next year, Yom Kippur, and year and the year after, and the year after, the Chen La'ilam for perpetuity. We're constantly asking Hashem for Mechila on the same stuff we did the year before. And he says, not only every single year, but every single day, we say, Chanan Amar Belisleach. And Al Tereb quotes that this with the Gemara says, the Tamid Shal Shacha, the morning communal sacrifice known as the Tamid. The, atone for the Avedas Halayla, the sins which could have been trans, uh, tra- uh, transgressed during the night time, and the day carbon, the afternoon carbon, communal carbon, the Tamid Shal Bein Harbayim, atone for the sins which could have been committed during the day. And, and again, every single day, which again feeds into the same idea that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Mechila Slicha is infinite, Hanun Hamar Beli Slayach. Again, you have to see the last week's class, the difference in Kippur, the difference of the of the um, of the carbon oilo. one one atones for the grave uh, grave sins, and one for more sins which are the mitzvahs say, which 
as the Altarebbe began, based on the Gemara and Yuma, by definition, a mitzvah say is lighter than a mitzvah loisese, even though you remember quoting the beginning of the Gezah Tshuva, the Altarebbe points out there is a certain gr- sense of gravity, which exists precisely in the positive mitzvah over the mitzvah loisese, but categorically it's considered more kal than, not that we weigh the mitzvahs, we don't, but by definition there's still the mitzvah say the different the, the energy and the gravity within every uh, violation, there are differences, of course. The mitzvah say as opposed to mitzvah leisah, so while the Liam Kippur atones for the more grave avedas, the everyday karbon and the tefillah, prayer with tshuva, atones for the mitzvah say. But the idea is that the, the message that I was saying, the fact that it's repeated on a daily basis, something doesn't make sense. As we mentioned, it can't be that because there is somebody who can fix uh, problems in your home, if it's an electrician or a plumber, it can't be that there's a system he comes every single day. If he comes every single day, there's a problem in the entire system. So what does it mean we have this embedded, incorporated into our Yiddish guide, if you will, the idea that there's in Kippur every single year or every single day we ask for atonement? What's that supposed to mean? It's all based and predicated on this idea that Hashem is a Rav Lisleach. Not only a Melech Meichel Vesileach, but He increases, again, the infinite energy which is associated with Hashem's attribute of Mechila, of atoning and forgiving. Again, as you can see in the previous classes, so Al Rebbe begins today, this sounds very much like this what the Gemara says about Echtava Oshuv Ishu. As the Gemara says, that one who says, I'm going to sin and I'll do tshuva. The other says, Ain't my speaking be yadi lasas tshuva. It's not going to work. Someone says, I see the virtue of tshuva. I want to do tshuva. Who doesn't want to be in with a Baruch We all want to be in with a Baruch We never want to be out with a Baruch Out of the domain of a Baruch In any form or fashion. So, sin and I'll do tshuva. Tshuva is always accepted in tshuva. There's the virtue of tshuva, the great... <clears throat> position, so to say, in the uh, framework of Am Yisrael, where the Baal Tshuva is positioned, is situated, even greater than the Tzaddik, as a whole, the Baal Tshuva. As the Gemara says, the Ein Baal Ein Tzaddikim Gmurim Chilin Lamed Ba, in the domain of the Baal Tshuva. The Tzaddikim Gmurim cannot stand there. Not only they don't, they cannot. Baal Tshuva's grand virtue and his connection, and the virtuous and unique and distinct type of connection with the Kodesh Baruch Hu is unparalleled. So someone says, yeah, I'll sin today, Sunday sin, Monday do tshuva, Tuesday sin, Wednesday do tshuva. So the Gemara says, no, that's not going to work. It must speak and be a glass of tshuva. It's not, they're, gonna, they're not going to give you the opportunity to do tshuva. And of course, there has to be an opportunity on high which is extended to you to open the door. Meaning when you have that arousal for tshuva, it's not just coming just like that. Of course, it's your decision and you're so just tapping in to your neshama and understanding the gravity of sinning, any type of sin, the disconnect with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, and as such, the remorse, the repentance, the pining to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the thirst, the yearning, the 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 uh, that that uh, that pining to a Kodesh, towards a Kodesh Baruch Hu as a result of the disconnect illustrated in Pedig Zayin of Lukuti Amorim, which we'll have to see Lukuti Amorim, the first segment. It's a click away. One feels he's an edit see if it's a Tamavis in a desolate place, disconnected from Lukuti Baruch Hu, and that arouses him to come back to Hashem in a way of a fervorous, passionate type of return. And that's why even greater than the tzaddik, than the way that the tzaddik is explained there. So someone's going to say that, you know, I want that, I want to have that. And the Gemara says it's not going to work. It must speak in the meaning to say the fact that you can arouse for that is of course, because there's an opening on high, which is kind of allowing you in, which is allowing that arousal to unfold. But if the doors are closed on high, it's not going to be a real, true, authentic, genuine arousal. And if you put it into your system that I'm going to sin, I'm going to do tshuva, I'm going to sin, I'm going to do tshuva, they close the door. And I'm speaking the biyod. It doesn't mean it's closed shut because I'm a chadabra, I'm a tshuva. The author himself is going to quote it here, but they don't give you the opportunity. 
And then, from there on, it's usually a slippery slope. And therefore, be careful. Don't establish an echteva ashu system. Sin and al do tshuva, God forbid. If one fell and then they picked themselves up, that's where tshuva works. But a system of echteva ashu, rachman utsan chas v'shalom. So asks the Alter Rebbe, this seems, whatever we presented till now, this seems like a pattern of Echt of Ashba, I will sin and I will do Tshuva. What seems? Everything we learned till now, again, tap into, we did point it out over here briefly, but t- tap into the previous classes, you see what we're talking about. It seems the perfect case and the perfect pattern of Echt of Ashba, I will sin and I will do Tshuva. Comes the Alter Rebbe and says, Ve'ein's the Echt of Ashub. It's not Echt of Ashub scenario. Expression. Why so? Kihainu, because when you say echtav ashub baruch atah, you know you're really hitting me in the right place. Let me check this one more time. Because when hainu davchi she b'shas hachet or you yochelich b'shitzri, the Rebbe teaches echtav ashub. Um, the Al Terebbe's explanation or the Al Terebbe's interpretation of Echtav Oshu is Dabkishibashachet in the time of sin, you could have controlled yourself. You're relying on Shuvah and repentance. Your heart is relying, literally translated, on repentance. I could control myself now. And I'm good to go. I'm good to control myself, my action, my speech, or my thought. But no, I won't. I rather won't because I rely on the subject of tshuva, on the present, on the gift of tshuva Hashem gave me that I could return to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That's what classically echtev Oshuv is all about in the way the Al Tanab interprets. So it's not that someone falls and does tshuva and falls again, Rahman al-Tzlan, and does tshuva, and it doesn't mean that. Falling is justified, and following is part of the falling is part of the system. No, it's not. We have to be strong. We should not fall, but we can fall. If somebody walks a thin line, let's say, and he falls, and he gets up, and he falls again. After a while, you realize you get the idea, you get how this is going, and you're able to balance balance yourself in the same token in the same. As in, in, in the message over here, of course we're not meant to fall that frequently. And we, try, we, we ought to get it, especially the Al-Tarebbe's doctrine, as you see in the beginning of the 14th chapter of the Lukuti Amorim, not this segment, again, click away, in the very beginning of Lukuti Amorim, the 14th chapter in Lukuti Amorim, as, as it comes following the 12th and 13th, the al Rebbe describes the Benini, it says, We have to strive to balance ourselves, meaning to say, to be the Benini, that we should not sin, despite the signals are very potent, that we should to do contrary to Rahman, God forbid, Hashem's desire to talk contrary to the way Hashem wants or does not want a Yid to talk. Opposite in the way Hashem wants a Yid to talk, meaning, and tells us what we should not speak. We should not talk about, and in thought, that we have to be careful not to think chas v'shalom deliberately, despite there's potent signals telling us, look there, listen to that, entertain that, get your mind and thoughtful of that. No, we have the full control and the full dominion to push it away 100%. And Eleo Kaladim Yimshech, we have to strive to do so. So the the constant falling is not something which is, it becomes a default Aveda or default expression in the Yid's Aveda Sashem, that is. Of course not, but nonetheless, if there exists that a person falls and he gets back up and falls and he gets back up, the Alter Rebbe establishes that that is not the Echte Va'ashu that the Gemara is talking about. That I will sin again to incorporate into the system that I will sin and I will do Tshuva. No. The Al Tereb's interpretation of that is that I I have the temptation. I could control myself one hundred percent. It will be just my single decision not to do that, speak that, think that, and I'm good. 
Then I say, you know what? The Shem put into the Torah the whole subject of tshuva. Let me exploit the tshuva. Let me sin. And again, I'm fully control myself. It's not falling. It's a deliberate choice. And I know that I could strengthen myself not to follow that signal which wants me to talk, speak, uh, do speak, think contrary to the Ratz and Hashem, to Hashem's desire, and have full control, and I'm good. I'm good to go. But I take advantage of the subject of tshuva, and I say, let me nonetheless sin, because I'm going to rely on the tshuva that I can do thereafter, subsequently. That is echte ashuv which we say, hey, must be can be the last of tshuva, that Hashem says, no, I'm not going to open the doors for you to do tshuva. However, if we fall, chas v'shalom, without any calculation, if someone falls in his action, his speech, and in his thought, and he does tshuva again, that's not the echt of ashuv. And because that's not the echt of ashuv, and therefore this which we say, must be can be the last of tshuva, that you, the doors are not open for you to do tshuva, does not apply over here. And as such, the previous information of the last week's class is so relevant and pertinent and so practical and, 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 and applicable to our Rabbi Yudas Hashem. And as opposed to the way the Al-Terebbe again interprets that I'm good to go, I have full control, and I would not, wouldn't be the subject of tshuva, it would, be, it would be a given that I'm going to control not to do that, not to speak that, not to think that. But I rely on tshuva. So there, there is a problem. The tshuva, that's what caused you to sin. Not your overwhelming yetzer hara. Which again, we have to know, and this has to be a precedent. In our Vedas Hashem, there's no such a thing that, oh, I lost it. By definition. Because Hashem, the Al Tereb establishes, and Hashem establishes in the Torah, and the Al Tereb makes it very clear in the Kutiyah Morim, the first chapters. And again, the, 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 the main, one of the main, strongest points the Al Tereb comes across with in those chapters that it's uh, this is the way Hashem has created the human being, not only a yid. The mind governs of the heart. This is default by the human being. Of course, we can expand the tithes, the temptations, the cravings. Give into the, one gives in too much to his cravings of his heart and his proclivities and he expand, expands the heart of course the mind is going to have a more difficult time to govern that expansive heart which is expanded by the choice of the human being as Dal Tereba says by the famous chapter in Pedic Yud Zion it's not so easy when you overly indulge you just expanded a heart you expect that Mayach should be shali dug dominate over that expanded heart, a heart expanded in areas of overly indulgence, in matters of your own personal cravings, and tithes and lusts, uh, which are, were not associated with Avayda Hashem, with a divine purpose for which, which you came down to this world with, of course it becomes more difficult. When it says, not Kelev, Kuli Lev, not to, Kuli Lev, but by default, Hashem created the human being. The Al-Tarebbe even says not only the Yid, but even the human being, the Mayach Shalat Alev, the mind governs the heart. And if it governs the heart by default, so therefore we have a head start the way Hashem created us. And therefore we have to, of course, <clears throat> execute this dominion over heart, mind over heart, not to allow the signals to enter. And again, in Loi Sesa, this is what Hashem says, not to speak. Not to do, not to think in, by the mitzvah say, not to be lax and to gain the alacrity in our Vedas Hashem, to do what Hashem wants and to do it diligently and to do it expansively and to talk the way what Hashem wants us to talk. Not as a tait and feel and so on and think the way Hashem wants a yid to think. And this is where we have to strive to. But, but, and, and, and therefore, in this very case, when somebody understands that, and when it, they have this signal, this temptation, they're able to 100% control themselves and ready to do so, but they remember, oh, there's the subject of tshuva, let me deliberately 
transgress and violate and rely on the tshuva. So you're taking the tshuva. The tshuva is a tshuva goyimim leilachtei. Goyimim this leilachtei. The tshuva causes you to sin. That's lowly, if you will. You're taking the gift of tshuva and exploiting it to such a degree that you're allowing the tshuva to cause not your temptation, because your temptation you could have easily over easily, it's not necessarily easily. It's a veidas Hashem, but doable. It's very doable in your system. As a human being with meich shalit alalev, your mind governing your heart to control yourself, not to do, not to speak, and not to think contrary to the way the Abishta wants you to do a thing and talk. You're good. You're usually good to go. But you're using the tshuva because you know there's the subject of tshuva, you're abusing it, if you will, and exploiting tshuva in order for you to make a decision to sin? No, they're, in my speaking, they're not going to allow you to do tshuva. But is this what we're talking about over here in the previous part of the chapter? Of course not. It's someone who falls and he does tshuva. Falls again. They do tshuva again. But they fell. It wasn't a deliberate decision. It's not the echta ba'ashuv which the Gemara is talking about. But you see how, again, fits so well with this, which we mentioned at the very beginning and repeated quite a few times. This is an extraordinary, comforting chapter. As the Alter Rebbe embraces us, embraces every single yid, you're part of it. This is who, where you belong, and this is, you can take advantage 100% of the subject of tshuva despite, or together with my deep and intense presentation in the first 10 chapters, it still belongs to you 100%, come into the fold, every and every thought which you would think that would distance you from tshuva it's just simply not true it's false starting from the Baruch HaTashem we just mentioned the Mar Belisleya the Slicha Mechila Kamer Bakosh Baruch Hu being an infinite uh, attribute or attribute which carries the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the previous messages the time and again asking for HaKadosh Baruch Hu's repent, uh, 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 atonement and forgiveness every Yom Kippur, every day. And here the Al Terebbe's unique interpretation of Echtav Osho, it's not like the way we would think, and therefore we'd say, No, I'm for sure out of the full light. That's my perfect pattern of Echtav Osho. No, it's not. And the Al Terebbe even takes it further. And the Al Terebbe says, Even you're in, you do fall in the category of Echta Vashu. And you are such an individual that you have full control. And you're okay to control. Okay meaning to say you're ready to go with your controlling your action, speech, and thought. But you're exploiting unjustifiable, unjustifiably the gift of Tshuva Vakadish Baruch Hu in order to sin even then, there's still hope for you. And the Alter Rebbe so carefully explains this Gemara Ein Ma speaking. It doesn't say even somebody who has pretty much fell to such a degree of completely, disrespectfully exploiting the greatest gift, which is the gift of Tshuva, to that degree, even there, the Gemara says, Ema speaking. The al Rebbe again ex- ex- gleans and extrapolates these two words and says, look, it doesn't say Hashem closed the door even on you, even on that individual, which does follow the Echtav Oshuv pattern, the way the al Rebbe explains Echtav Oshuv, which one would say, no, for such a person there is no hope. The Tshuva is the cause, the famous expression, as a famous classic example, briefly, <clears throat> when it comes to the Yom Kippur, the Kohen Gadol was told not to wear the golden vestments. 
starting from Arunakayim. And why so? Because he was going into a very sensitive area, of course, the Kedusha Kadashi. And in this sensitive area, as we can only appreciate the more sensitive the scenario is, the more careful we ought to be. So the Abish just says, a whole year you go out, you, you, you do your Avedah with a unique and distinct um, big day Kain Gadol. The attire of the Kain Gadol, which is the gold part, a lot of it was the gold associated with these vestments. Comes in Kippur, you're going to the Kedush HaKadosh, be careful. Why be careful? Because Arana Kayin, on the surface at least, was instrumental, at least again on the surface, you follow the parsha, and the kain is never shaykhs, of course, to the cheta egil, to the sin of the golden calf. But if you look at the parsha, he was trying to avoid, but in the end of the day, his suggestions led to Am Yisrael doing, violating the, with the golden calf, the greatest violation of all time. So the Altarebbe, the, 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 the Hashem tells Aaron Akayin, and again, by extension, all the Kayin, Aaron Gedelim. Throughout all the time when we had the Mishkan and the Beis HaMikdash, Mikdash is in the Beis HaMikdash, that when you come into the Kedush HaKadosh, don't wear gold. Why? Because it'll arouse, at least subtly, the golden calf, which you are in a kain, was one way or another involved with. In Kateger, you're trying to be in Saneged Alam Yisrael, which means to advocate for Am Yisrael. And when you're going in with the gold, the gold vestments, or those vestments which had the gold on them, which is somewhat reminding, again, in that very super sensitive time, of something else which was associated with gold, with a golden calf, which would bring kateger al Am Yisrael, anything else but advocation for Am Yisrael. To the contrary, it would bring a lot of energy, it would remind on high that very famous sin, associated with gold. So be super careful. It's a sensitive time. Stay away from the gold because in Kateger Nasa Sanegir, you're trying to bring Sanegir and Am Yisrael. You're trying to advocate um, positivity towards Am Yisrael, which who you're representing, the nation of Israel, who you're representing when you go into the Kedush Kodashim, you might turn things around because that gold, Chas V'Shalom, could be a Kateger. And in Kateger Nasa Sanegir, the kategir, which means that energy cannot work and would not work to be an advocate for Am Yisrael. And in this case also, the greatest sanegir in the personal Avedah that Hashem Hayyid has, and his only hope is the Avedah of Tshuva, that Hashem is ready to accept me, Hashem is ready to embrace me, and Hashem is allowing me to reconnect, especially again based on the doctrine of the Alter Rebbe, the profound message of the Alter Rebbe in the previous chapters. I could reconnect Toshu, Tshuva, Toshu, Hei, Hei, Tato, the lower level of Tshuva, and the, the, the Tato, the lower, means say the standard Tshuva, then the Tshuva Ilo, the superior level of Tshuva, taking the Hei, the Hei, Tato, the lower Hei, and reuniting it with the Yud Kevo, and then the higher Hei with the Yud. Again, everything which al Rebbe learned taught us over here. And that unique Tshuva, which is the greatest Sanegar advocate, and again, for us in our personal Avedas Shem, and of course, collectively for Am Yisrael, you're going to use that to bring, bring the Kateger, to cause you to sin? It's, it's by the old definitions, besides being a paradox, an oxymoronic, it's, it's something which is chutzpah. You're taking the most positive idea and saying, oh, I'm going to rely on that. I have full control. I can control myself now, not to speak, not to do, not to think, contrary to the way the Ebesh Hashem wants me to do, to talk, to think. All good, but I'm going to take that, the greatest Sanegar I have, and abuse that to the extent that that's going to become the Kateger, and that's going to cause me to sin. It's very low. And that's what the Rebbe says, that's the Echt of Hashem, what the Gemara is talking about. But look how the Alter Rebbe takes it further, and the Alter Rebbe says, even you're such a person. It doesn't say the doors are closed completely for you on high. It says, Ain't my speaking beyond the last is true. They're not going to give you the opportunity. Look how careful the Alter Rebbe <coughs> extrapolates and deals with and dissects these words and says, Afghan Zeis, even such a person, such a lowly person, one would say by all definitions. Not that he fell, it was not that it was 
a difficult situation. Again, we have control, but nonetheless, the person fell. No, it's somebody who deliberately relies on tshuva in order to sin. Apparently, such a person, the door should be shut closed on such a person. Mar says, no. Even there, a must speaking. Afgam zeis, a must speaking daika. They're not going to give him the opportunity. But even such a person in Dochak, when he's Chazek, when he's Gabriel Yitzir, that if he pushed his way through, and he strengthened himself, and he <coughs> gained dominion over his Yitzir Hara, strengthened himself over his Yitzir Hara, or Tshuva, and he actually pushed through and it does Tshuva, guess what? Even him, even that individual, Mekablin Tshuva say on high, they do receive his Tshuva. How the doors of Tshuva remain one way or another always accessible if they're wide open if they're less wide open but always accessible yes we're not going to be mis- speaking give you the opportunity as we said even the arousal within the heart of the year to reconnect also comes on high from on high the famous Varta Al-Trebe in Kutitayr and the famous Amilu Dehdi said the Abba Ve'ira the love and fear of HaKadosh Baruch which is aroused by the human being also comes from on high, as Hashem opens the door for the person to arouse the love and fear. In this case, the fact that a person arouse, arouses his heart to do tshuva also comes from some opening from on high. And in this case, such a person, which abused tshuva to that degree, aim a speaking, they, they, close, they, 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 they close the door in a bit, or maybe even a lot, but it's not tight shut. They're not giving you the opportunity. But if you understand where you're holding and what you've done and the conduct that you incorporated to the extent that you be into your system, so to say, into your, into, into your conduct, the manner of a performance the, what, which you incorporated into your conduct, that you become that echt of osh of yid, and all of a sudden you say, really? I fell so low that I'm ready to, I had the full ability and the conscious ability to control myself, and I'm exploiting tshuva in order to sin, I fell so low, and you shake yourself off, and you realize that level of lowliness, and push your way in, and say, no, I'm going to do tshuva, they accept your tshuva on high. You push the door open. Of course they made it a bit more difficult. A must speaking, but the door is not closed. And in Dochak, when he's Chazik, when he's Gabriel Yitzre, if you push through, push that door open, and you did tshuva, and again, you're talking about you did sincere tshuva, and perhaps this person needs more, so to say, sincerity, which he needs to express because he realizes the level, the, the, the lowly level he fell in, he or she fell into. That they fit perfectly, that Echtav HaOshuv describes it in the way the al Tareb interprets it, Echtav HaOshuv in the Gemara, and they shake themselves up, and they push through, and they push the door open, and they do tshuva, even then, the Kabbalah tshuva, so they accept their tshuva. The Altarebbe says, this is such a unique case, and even by that unique case, the tshuva is accepted. But that's not our story. Well, oh no, Shemeva, we don't even fit the Echdev Who does? Onu the Alter Rebbe continues. Shemavakshim tshuva b'chol yoyim. We ask Hashem every single day. Slach lonu, forgive us. Even before that, on Magdim Mavakish, which is one bracha before the slach lonu, we preface to ask Hashem al zedei nebeshuva shleim olufamecho. We bring up this brack with a true and with a complete tshuva, a complete repentance for you. Da'inu that we establish. In that bracha, which is the spirit of that bracha, that we're not going back to that area of sin anymore, nor in action, nor in speech, nor in thought. This is the content of the bracha right before the slach lano. Bring us back to your tayyidavik. Bring us close. Please bring us close to you, to your service. Please bring us back with a complete tshuva for you, in front of you. And we conclude again, Baruch HaTah Hashem, say Hashem's name, which says again, there is certain certainty over here, established certainty that Haritzah B'Shuvah Hashem desires tshuva. We're not the one. 
which is the Echdevish type of individual. Before we would we even ask Hashem Slach Lono, we're saying, no, we're not going back there again. That we're not going back to that foolishness of sinning again. And we repeat the same idea in the prayers of Yom Kippurim, which is Yom Kippur. If you notice, if you follow the Master, we ask Hashem time and again, shall it be the will of Hashem that we should not sin again? We stand resolutely asking Hashem, may it be your will that we should not sin again? Speaking, Uma speaking. What a beautiful Lashem. Of the Al-Tareb. They let us in, and they let us in. And they open the doors on high, and the doors they, meaning to say on high, the doors are open for us, and the doors are open for us, because we don't fit, by all definitions, that Echt of Ashuv, the way it's explained over here, what Echt of Ashuv is. No, we're not exploiting that Tshuva in a negative, awkward, paradoxical, manner and fashion. Not at all. We ask and we stand with humility in front of HaKadosh Baruch that we're not going back to that sin again. And there we ask, Slach Lono, of course, must speaking, Uma speaking, we're all in, 100%. The arms are on high. Haviyachal, of course, are open for us to embrace us, to bring us in. Kemayim and Azal, like that Azal tell us, Habol, it tired, he sayin, I say someone comes, to purify himself, they assist him on high. And look what it says. Al Tareb again gleans, extrapolates that word. Habo. It's not that you made an appointment and now we're going to talk about it for an hour, 45 minutes, and then they're going to allow you on high and they're going to assist you on high to be purified. The Gemara says, Habo. Right when you step up to the plate, Miyad Shabo. Right when you come, they assist you to purify it, to be pure. So if, they, if, that, if that's the case, he'll say, got maslicha v'amechili gam himiyat. So to the atonement and the forgiveness from on high is immediate, right away. We'll stop over here. But the al is saying, let's face it. The majority of Am Yisrael does not fit the Echdav Ashav, and even then the Al-Tareb says, they must speak, and it doesn't say the door is closed. Which you can see the overall message of the Al-Tareb. There ain't left of it, I mean, and nothing stands in the face of Tshuva. We could always push ourselves, and even someone falls so low to that level of the Echdav Ashav described and interpreted by the Al-Tareb over here, also doesn't say the door is closed, they must speak, but if you push through, of course they're going to accept you on high. But the the, the default of Am Yisrael, collectively and individually every Yid it's not even that Echt of and to the contrary, we make it very clear that we ask him and we plead that of course I'm not coming back to this area and by Yom Kippur it may be your will that I should not sin again and then we ask for the atonement of course, ma speaking, uma speaking, and when right away, habo, right when you come, miyad shabo, misayin, they say they assist you on high to become tahir, to become pure, and as such, your atonement and your forgiveness is miyad, is immediately, right away, in the instant. Have a wonderful.